Oh, it sounds pretty good, right? It sounds good, but it's really a pussycat. This is one of our one of our fleet. Um, it's a 67 Dart GT. You guys have seen it in, this, in these videos before. And it's got a 273 in it. And while it sounds really strong, it's not. It's a pussycat. Um, more just get more just tired. In fact, we're building a 273. We're going to build a Magnum headed 273 that's going to go in this, but that's not going to be for a while. This car is like one of those standby members of the fleet when one of the other dailies goes down. We jump in this and use it. Uh, and it's a great driving car. You can hit the road perfect. The highway, you know, it's happy. It's 65, 70 miles an hour all day long. Um, and, you know, she'll cruise up at 85, 90 when she has to. So it's a very tired 273, a 904, and a 296 gear, 294 gear, 7 and a quarter rear. And uh, like I says, I love the car. It's a roach. I mean, it's really a roach. But why am I telling you all of this about the car? Well, because of this thing. We picked up this last week. We did a video on our GTEC Pro. And I haven't really used it since we got it. So, this thing got me thinking. Got me, you know, got to go way back. Some of the most fun I've ever had with cars has been just making time shots. In fact, like, I'll tell you, one of, the, one of my favorite days of all time, one of my, you know, best memories, screwing around with cars, was uh, back when I was doing Cars Illustrated magazine. I had uh, my Mustang, and we had a deal worked out with English Town for advertising, where they'd let us use the track during the day for, you know, one, once a week or so, for, te for doing our test vehicles or, or photo shoots, or whatever we had to do. So uh, there was one day that I took the car out there. I was racing this car seven days and nights a week, right? But there was one day that I took the car out there and they set up the clocks for me. And all I did was run 60 footers, like all day long. I, I, well, I'll tell you what, I don't know how many 60 footers I, I made that day, but I used an entire roll of the timing tape doing it. So uh, but anyway, it, to me, it was a blast because it was just like, you know, I, honing in you know f finding that goal and then honing in on the goal and then trying this and trying that and trying the other thing and moving the seat all the way back and I mean just you know I, anything I could dream up to try to get that car you know working off the thousandth of a second to get that 60 foot down ironically enough I, I don't remember what the 60 foots were but at that moment in my life it was the most important thing there was period so anyway it was a slow car, you know, in the 1340s, 1350s, and, uh, but it was fun, it was a blast, it was that challenge, you know, and it was the timer. The timer, well, the clocks made the difference. And in this case, I think this is gonna make the difference for us. Like I said, I really haven't had a chance to play with this thing since we picked it up. But, so, here's what I wanna do with this car. Um, I, I definitely don't want to make a project out of this. It's not going to be projects. We have enough projects to keep us going for a long time. But on this channel, we talk a lot about theory. We talk a lot about you know, different things that you know make horsepower or make things more efficient or whatever. And using this and this car, we can start to quantify some of those things that we talk about. Like exactly how much difference does weight make? on an average, let's say, street car. Um, the, the difference between a, a Holley and an Ellerbrock carburetor of the, C, the same CFM. Mechanical versus vacuum secondaries. Electronic versus points ignitions. Uh, what, how, what's the value of uh, unplugging the field on the alternator? It's like there, there's like a million different things from different aerodynamic tricks to suspension things to horsepower things that now that we have this, we can go anytime we want any place that has no traffic, right? And go test these things out. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And this is the car we're gonna do with it. So, let's, yes, I know. Karen, the windshield is cracked. I know. I'm gonna fix it, relax. <coughs> so here are the, the, the boundaries to this. We're not gonna do anything to this car that will affect its, let's say, highway cruising operation. We're not changing the rear end. We're not changing the transmission. It's gonna get a better motor, but that's not gonna be for well. This is the motor that we're gonna use for our tests. 
um, we're not adding any suspension parts. We're not taking anything off the car. Um, it's going to remain in the exact state that it is now, except that we'll try different things, you know, that don't affect reworking the car, re-engineering the car. The purpose here is not to build a hot rod. We have hot rods. The purpose here is to quantify different modifications or, or, or theories or techniques and, and, and put them to actual work with a timer that's accurate enough to, you know, we can pull stuff to the thousandth of a second. So, under the hood here is a trusty old 273 of unknown mileage. Um, it is tired. I could tell you that at idle, you know, it, it, it's lucky to see four pounds of, of oil pressure. If you're cruising along, let's say at like 40 miles an hour and you look at the oil pressure gauge, it'll be reading like 20, 25 PSI. As soon as you give it gas, it dives down to, you know, it dives down to like 20 because the crank and the rods and everything are being pushed to the bottom and making all of these big spaces for the, you know, for the oil to. So, I mean, it's tired, but it's adorable. I mean, I beat on this car constantly, you know, just because it sounds good and it's a fun car to beat on. Uh, it's slow. Now, I have not put a timer on this thing yet. I would say seat of the pants, it probably, it's probably like a, a mid 16 second car. It's very soft off the starting line, mostly because it's a tiny motor uh, and it has that, that highway gear in it, the 294 gear. The car is relatively heavy as far as the dart goes. It was originally an AC car. It's got console and bucket seats. Like this is about as, as heavy, it's, on, it's definitely on the heavy side of what a dart should be. And we'll weigh this thing. Um, I, I'm gonna guesstimate, I'm gonna say it's gonna hit the scales right at about 3450, 3500 pounds, you know, as it sits right now. But again, the idea is we're not building a hot rod. We're just gonna test different theories as we go along. And the thing we're gonna do today is take this thing to, a, uh, to an undisclosed, no traffic location and make a few passes with it just to uh, we'll play, play with our GTEC and get a baseline performance on the car. What does this thing actually run? So let's head over there now and uh, let's see what she does. So we've got this thing all hooked up. She's mounted up on the windshield. I know, Karen, I know. So uh, that's all ready to go. We've got our GPS antenna up on the roof. And uh, so just to show you how accurate this thing is, watch this. We're sitting still, okay? watch watch the speedo I'm just gonna take my foot off the brake just for a second it registers as soon as the car moves even the slightest bit it's amazing right so here are the two modes that it has it has acceleration run so when you hit this button right here when you go it starts recording and it has a 12 inch roll out built into it. So let's let's just let's just play with it real quick. Ready? Okay. So alright, that's how that works. Then it also has this other one which we're not gonna bother with. This is a horsepower torque pull, right? So it has a like a, a dyno program kind of built into it. But you know what? It takes into account the, 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 the coefficient of drag, all sorts of things. And I tell you the truth, I would much rather try to calculate horsepower by ET and mile an hour than this. So this is this is this is a function we're not gonna we're not gonna be bothering with on this unit. But come on. We're gonna work with the acceleration line. Alright, so we just gassed up, let's take a ride over to the undisclosed location and try to hurt this thing. All right, so we made it down here to our uh, road in Mexico, and uh, it's nice, it's flat, it's straight. You can see traffic from both directions. Um, okay, right now it's about 65 degrees out. It's like perfect. Water temperature's at 185. I say let's give this a shot. Let's make the first one with 120 pounds of ballast in the passenger seat, and then we'll make two more. We'll average out to three, and that's what we got. So, I'm gonna hit Acceleration run. Go when ready.
so let's see what we just ran on that one. All right, so we hit quarter mile time. Wow, it's faster than I thought it was. 15.82 at 85 miles an hour. Now, if you want to see the actual details of the run, you hit this. There was no acceleration run. Oh, okay, wait, hang on. Uh, quarter mile time. Oh, here. Okay, so this is actually showing the run in real time. So there's that first, that first little marker, that's a 60 foot. And that's 330. Or oh, I'm sorry, one of them is zero to 60, and another one is 330. And then there's our eighth mile. There's our quarter mile. A thousand foot and a quarter mile. That actually didn't run bad. That went faster than I thought it would. You can see on this, you can see on this uh, on this graph here how the car picks up like towards the top of first gear. Look at the way the acceleration line runs up. It's a small motor with a biggish cam, you know, so that's where it makes power. So let's uh, let's unload the ballast. Sorry about that. You're more than just ballast to me. And make another one. of taking weight out of the car and it slows down. We just went 16 at 83 miles an hour. But it spun the tires a lot this time where it didn't when we had the weight in the car. So let's make one more and I'll, I'll walk it out easy and try to keep the tires stuck. all day but evidently the car is consistent as long as I keep it stuck it's consistent which is what we need here so I'm gonna it smells like it wants to catch fire um, I'm gonna go review all of these you know and, and just chart out the 60s and all that. Um, but here's the thing I'm gonna watch the comments right what tests do you guys want to see us do on this car now remember not changing any components. The car itself stays in the, in the state that it is. But there's a zillion different experiments we could try with it. So I'll watch the comments to see what you guys come up with. Alright, until then, I think I'm going to make one more and go home. See you tomorrow.